Hello and welcome to this video on compound changes. Now let's just say that we had some money, we had a thousand pounds and we were putting it into Bank Bickerstaff. And Bank Bickerstaff offers 5% interest in the first year. Now what interest means is basically what percentage extra they're giving you each year. So if you put a thousand pounds in, then after one year, they'll give you 5% extra of whatever you put in. So it's a 5% increase each year. And then each year after, you get 2% in this particular bank account. Um, interest per annum, PA means per annum, and that's just Latin for per year. So you're getting 2% interest per year after the first year. So, how much would we have after one year? Well, we'd start with £1,000, and then let's think, what do we multiply by in order to increase it by 5%? Well, in the video on decimal multiplies, we saw that we could multiply by 1.05. Do you remember, if something increases by 5%, then it's going up from its initial value of 100%, everything starts 100%, up to 105%. And 105% as a decimal is 1.05. So we call that a decimal multiplier because it's what we're multiplying by to have a particular percentage effect. So if we do that, we get £1,050. What about after two years? Now what we could do is we could take that figure of £1,050 and then apply a 2% increase to it because the 2% you're getting is based on the current amount that you have. But we could do it in one go. So we could do 1000 then after one year we times by 1.05 to increase it by 5% and then for the second year we then, whatever that amount is, we times by 1.02 to increase it by 2%. So if we do that in our calculator, 1,000 times 1.05 times 1.02, and that is equal to 1,071 pounds. What about after three years? Well, we do 1,000 pounds, and then we'd multiply by 1.05 for the first year increase, and then we'd multiply by 1.02 for the second year and the third year. So 1.02 and times by 1.02 again, but we could write that more concisely as 1,000 times 1.05 times, well, 1.02 times 1.02 is 1.02 squared. So if we put that in our calculator, 1,000 times 1.05 times 1.02 squared is equal to 1,092 pounds and 42 pence. What about after four years? Well, we start with 1,000, we times by 1.05 for the 5% increase in the first year, and then for the second year, the third year, and the fourth year, we're increasing by 2%. So we're, we're times by 1.02, and then 1.02 again, and then times by 1.02 again, but we could write that as times 1.02 cubed to mean that we're times by 1.02 three times. And then we just put that in our calculator, and that is 1114.27 to the nearest pence. And what about 10 years? So it's going to be 1,000, and then we're timesing one by 1.05 for the first year. And then how many years are we getting 2%? Well, in the first year, we're getting the 5%. So for the remaining nine years, we're getting the 2%. So it's going to be multiplying by 1.02 nine times. We just have a power of nine. And we put that into our calculator. I can just press the left key to modify what I wrote earlier, change that to a nine, and we're now going to get 1254.85. Now just one more example. Let's just say we have uh, 200 pounds and we get 6% um, interest per annum, PA. And you might ask, how much do we have after five years? We can just do this in one quick calculation. We start with 200 and we're multiplying by what each year to get the 6% increase? Well, we multiply by 1.06. That has the effect of a 6% increase, but we're applying that change five times. We just do it to the power of five and we do 200 times 1.06 to the power of five. And that gives me 267 pounds and 65 pence. You might wonder, by the way, could we just find 6% of 200? So 6% of 200, 
which is £12, and saying, well, we're getting £12 each year, and I just do 200 plus £12 uh, for each of the five years, so five lots of 12, and that would give us £260. Well, interestingly, that's a different amount to what we've got here. So why are they different? And the reason is, is that each year we're getting the 6%, we're getting 6% of the current amount. So after the first year, the £200 would go up to 212 and then we're getting 6% of £212, that increased amount, not the original 200. So that 6% is worth a bit more each year because we're getting 6% of a larger amount. And this, by the way, is known as simple interest. If we're just getting the 6% of the original amount each year, so we're just getting £12 each year, then that's known as simple interest. Whereas if you're getting the 6% of what you have currently, you use this particular method here, we times by 1.06 to the power 5, and that is known as compound interest. Now, I've only ever seen one exam question before which used simple interest, and it was uh, over a decade ago, but you always assume compound interest unless they state otherwise. Now, let's use that to solve some of these exam style questions. One, a bank account offers 3% interest per annum. If I invest £600, how much do I have after eight years? So we start with £600, and we want to have the effect of a 3% increase each year. So we times by 1.03. How much do I have after eight years? So I'm applying that percentage increase eight times. So I use a power of eight. And if I do that on my calculator, 600 times 1.03, to the power of eight, I get 760 pounds and six pence to the nearest penny. What about question two? An Aston Martin initially bought for 80,000 pounds, it's quite cheap, depreciates in value by 15%. Depreciates means reduces in value by 15% each year. How much is it worth in three years? Well, so we do, we have the same form of expression as before, 80,000. And we're timesing by what each year to reduce it by 15%. Which starts at 100%, it reduces by 15%, it's now 85% of its value. So we want to find 85% of the current value each year. That as a decimal multiplier is 0.85. And we want to know the value in three years. So we're timesing by 0.85 three times, so we can put cubed. And then we do that on our calculator times by 0.85 cubed, and that gives me 49,130. So questions on kind of compound changes will be of this form, but sometimes they throw in some kind of more obscure ones. I have 300 stamps in my collection. If I increase my collection by 16% each year, after how many years will I have 630 stamps? Now this is interesting because we know the original number of stamps and we know the final number of stamps when usually we're trying to work out the final amount. Um, and they give you what you're timesing by each year. You're going to get 16% greater each year so we can work out the decimal multiplier. The thing that's unknown in this case is the number of years. So it's basically the power, the number of times we're implying this increase. So let's write down everything we can in this form. So we have 300 stamps. We're increasing it by 16% each year. Well, 100% rises to 116%. That as a decimal multiplier is 1.16 as a decimal. And the number of years is, we don't know. So let's call it N. Let's say it's N years. So we're applying a 16% increase for N years, and then it ends up as 630. Now, we want to find out what n is. So we could divide base size by 300. So if I divide base size by 300, that gets rid of the times 300. And if I do 630 divided by 300, that gives me 2.1. So we're trying to work out, well, 1.16 to what power gives you 2.1? Now, at GCSE, you're just expected to do this effectively by trial and error. If we do 1.16 and we times it by 1.16 again, so, so we're squaring it, that gives me 1.3456, so we're not up to 2.1 yet. So let's times by 1.16 again, so we effectively got 1.16 cubed, and then that gives me 1.56, and then I can actually, because I've got 
answer key times 1.16 on my calculator, it's just going to times the current value by 1.16 each time. So I'm up to cubed. If I press the equals key again, I'm up to power 4, which is 1.18. I press the equals key again, I'm up to 2.1, which is exactly what I want. So n was equal to 5 years because 1.16 to the power of 5 is 2.1, just about. Now, just for your interest, if you actually want to work this out exactly, um, there's something you'll learn at A level, which is logs, and you could write this as, to get n, n is equal to log base, and you, whatever the base is here, you write as the base here, and then we put the 2.1. And don't worry about how this works, and you're absolutely not expected to do this GCC exam, but we can actually use this log button on your calculator. So we do log base 1.16, that's a little small number, and then we put the 2.1 in, and that actually gives you 4.9989, which is just about 5. So we could actually get it uh, exactly the value of n uh, without use, having to use trial and error, but you would absolutely not be expected to do that. Now this last question here, uh, we've got a similar thing where we've got something missing. So, there are 1,200 fish in Lake Ingle. The quantity of fish increases by x percent each year. After six years, the number of fish has doubled. Determine x. So we write our equation the same form as we have with all the other equations. We're starting with 1,200 fish. Now this time, it's the decimal multiplier that's unknown. We don't know what the percentage increase is each year. So I'm just going to write for the moment d as a decimal multiplier. And how many times are we applying that percentage increase? Well, it's after six years, so we, we've got a power of six. So we're timesing by some number, some decimal multiplier we don't know. We're applying it six times because we have six years, and then we end up with how many fish? Well, it says the number of fish had doubled. So 1,200 is going to double to 2,400. And then we just need to solve this equation. So d we have 6 and we're multiplying by 1200 to get 2400 so let's undo that times by 1200 so d to the 6 is 2400 divided by 1200 which is just 2 now d we're doing that to the power of 6 to get to 2 how do we undo that power of 6 well if it was to the power of 2 if it was squared we know the opposite is square rooting the opposite of a power of 6 is the sixth root so d is equal to the sixth root of 2. If we do that in the calculator, um, you can get that. It's this key here. You're going to have to use shift because it's in gold. And we're going to put a little 6 there, cheeky little 6. And then we've got 2. The sixth root of 2 is 1.1225. That would do to four decimal places. So we're multiplying each year by 1.1225. Now that represents what percentage increase? Well that as a percentage is 112.25%. So therefore we're increasing x is 12.25%.